for the village council to order. I'm going to ask the court to call the roll. Commissioner Burns? Here. Commissioner Manning? Here. Commissioner Novak? Here. Commissioner Adler? Here. Mayor Calderon? Here. So, commissioners, um, at our budget meeting, what we do is we suspend the rules, meaning that we're not taking any official action. Uh, there won't be any more roll call votes. Um, this is more or less a uh, more of a casual meeting, different than a part of our regular council meeting. So uh, generally what we do, the process is, is that uh, Tim and, and might be a combination with Tish is going to go through a little presentation that will highlight kind of all the sources of revenue and expenses. And then once that's concluded, then we're going to start with tab number one and work our way through the binders that each of you have. And we'll go through each department until uh, all of you feel satisfied that these are the numbers that we want to work with. We always have our department heads here um, so that they can speak on, on behalf of the uh, respective budget that is presented. Uh, they're the best at being able to articulate uh, what's going on in there. In addition to Tim and Tish, uh, both of them are going to be uh, as familiar with all of the departments, but we certainly want to have the uh, person responsible for the respective department here to answer any questions that we may have. So uh, again, while Tim is doing his presentation, and even having to get into the books, if you need to get up to the bathroom, or you want to get another break or some more food, just feel free to do so. Any questions so far? Tim? Thank you, sir. Well, good evening, everyone, and thanks uh, for taking time tonight. It's hard at the end of the one day to come back at night time like this, especially for budget talks, but we really appreciate it. Um, I want to just take a moment and thank each of the department heads for their efforts in putting this together, and certainly especially Tish for all the work that she's done on creating um, you know, not only our budget, but something that's pretty easy to understand so that it's not so overwhelming. But as the mayor said, the first couple minutes I'll do a quick presentation that will take us through the highlights of fiscal 2015, which is our budget year just ended, and some of the highlights of 2016. Um, when I'm done, unless there are some specific questions about some of the very early pages, we can pretty much go into tab one, and I'll tell you just a couple other things about tab one, and then we can move on into each department unless there's questions. As the mayor said, this is about as informal as it gets. So, if you have a question while I'm talking, grab my attention and either Tish or I, or any one of the departments that's going to be happy to answer that question to the best of our ability. With that, we'll open it up. So, um, I did have the opportunity to speak with uh, each of the three newly elected officials one-on-one, -on -one, and in that meeting I made sure that we had the department head, as well as Tish Handy, so that we could take them through the general outline of the budget and how it worked and some of the highlights and lowlights, if you will. But I did mention to them that evening, and I'll mention it just one more time, the budget is not a statutory requirement as the Village of Forest Park operates under the appropriation ordinance system. The budget document is a tool used for receipts and disbursements, and it's developed to allocate resources that will provide public service services efficiently. Staff reviews this document on a monthly uh, document monthly to ensure the budget will balance on an annual basis. So again, as I mentioned the other day, we are under no specific guideline or rule to have the budget. We work under the appropriate uh, appropriation ordinance, which you will all see in the next two weeks, I think, um, as that is the document that gives us authority to spend money. That document is created from the budget, and it's just, you know, for lack of a better word, a lumping together of all the various departments that you see. It's important to understand that the Village of Forest Park has a purchasing policy, and that any spending has to be done in accordance with the purchasing policy. The appropriation ordinance does provide the legal authority for spending and establishes the legal spending limit. Um, and it must be adopted each year no later than um, the first quarter of, the, of that year. Go ahead, Scott. We'll 
hold, please, is what I say. Um, I want you to understand something really important that Tish and I say every year. We say it every year to the department heads. The budget is not a license to spend money. So you'll see on several occasions, and certainly in years past, there's been things in the budget that we've just said, you know what, we can't afford it. We can't afford it this fiscal year. Let's hold it. So just because it's in the budget does not mean that it's going to happen. Those are all decisions that are made, frankly, by each of the elected officials. They're made by the department heads and then by Tish and I on whether or not we feel that we can do it. But just keep in mind that just because it's here doesn't mean that any of the department heads have the ability to just spend the money. Um, the village operates with two operating funds, and that becomes our general fund and our water fund. Uh, the general fund is the main operating fund supported by, by taxes, grants, fees, fines, and it includes a subset of the police vehicle replacement fund. And the water fund is obviously the water fund. Keep in mind that just a few years ago, the village um, determined that with the uh, input from our auditors and legal, we determined that sewer expenses can be paid for legally out of the water fund. So, for example, when we do an alley now, I take whatever I can, um, whatever I can cut out of that total bid price, <coughs> the sewer portion, and Tish uh, then allocates that to the water fund, and that's helped a lot to keep our general fund uh, operating more efficiently and, and at a surplus. The special revenue funds that we have, they are restricted. It's the VIP fund, our TIFs and non-major governmental funds. Revenues are committed for specific purposes. So um, you're all aware now, because we've talked about it a couple times, our VIP fund, which is a full 1% of sales tax. That money is allocated to VIP. It means it has to be used for infrastructure. I can't, in a really bad year, say, Tish, um, the police department is really running low on a vehicle. I got. I got to get them two new vehicles. Uh, I'm going to borrow money from the tip, from the VIP fund to do that. I can't do it. I can't borrow money from the TIF funds to do that. It has to be spent uh, for what it was allocated for. This is a, just a huge graph that sort of shows the operating fund summary. I'm not going to read each of those, but I will tell you that um, last year. Fiscal 2015, we projected a net revenue income of 1,129,000 and change compared to budget at 731,423. The uh, revenues and expenditures entered at 91% of budget expectation. Water fund uh, reached 93% uh, percent and expenses at 90%. Reductions in budgeted expenditures and referral of assets and infrastructure improvements support the net gain. That is a very clear example of how this budget document works for us. As the year goes on, and we really start at about the sixth month of the um, fiscal year to really start monitoring both sides of it, mostly the, the revenue side, so that if we see that revenue is coming in short, well, then we start either deferring expenditures or we start slowing them down greatly. If it looks like we're on target, then we, you know, we keep moving forward. But at six months, we really start operating, not quite on a day-to-day -day basis, but certainly on a month-to-month -month basis. And each month after that sixth month, each of the department heads gets a copy, and actually the elected officials do as well, of where we stand in that department. So if, if we see a big line item starting to go a little bit haywire, like, um, I know in, in uh, public property, you know, we've had some years with a lot of trees that, you know, the tree expense starts going way up. Well, then we start making arrangements to slow that, the cutting down and the trimming and things like that. Um, for fiscal 2016, the operating revenues reflect a 3% increase and uh, expenditures a 4% increase over the 2015 budget. Net income expectation is $501, $120,000. So that means at the end of the year, when I'm giving this presentation next year, if I'm still here, um, 
that I expect that between the op or the operating fund, I guess I should say, the um, general fund combined with the water fund, I anticipate having about a half a million dollars and some change in surplus revenue over expenses. So in 2015, here's a couple of the highlights. We have the village hall roof repair, purchase of fire replacement vehicles, fire department rescue equipment, a total of $385,150. And I'll tell you just for a minute about the roof repair. Um, we knew that the roof on Village Hall was old, and we knew that someday it would need to be replaced. Well, some of the storms last year told us someday had arrived. And uh, we went out pretty quickly and got an estimate and actually secured bidding for it and uh, ended up with $200,000 in a roof replacement budget. Somewhere, Tish and I needed to find that money because the work had to be done. You can see we don't operate with a big surplus in any department, so we needed to find that revenue. The water fund last year, we did a comprehensive sewer study, which will be presented here the last meeting in July, Mayor, of the results of that sewer study. Yeah. 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 On the 27th, you'll see the results of that study. We did a uh, LA uh, program sewer improvement a total of 214000 Out of the VIP fund last year, we did a street pension project, five alleys, uh, displays avenue sidewalk extended all the way to 22nd Street, a million dollars worth of uh, capital improvement projects last year. We said now, federal, state, city of funds, we built the garage on the back of the police station um, and a vehicle total cost of 349000 Those were big ticket, big expenditure items. Uh, local share of sales tax up 13% from 2014. Revenue associated with uh, construction permits exceeded expectations as in uh, fiscal year 2014. So that's a big number to keep in mind. 13% sales taxes went up. This village lives on sales tax. We are not a home rule community. We have no ability to add a tax for fuel, for example, or um, any of those things that home rule communities can do as a generator of income, uh, a, a transfer tax, for example, when properties transfer, we can't do any of that stuff because we're a non-home rule. So sales tax going up 13% for us is huge. In those years, 2008 through 2012, sales tax down 10%. Sales tax down 13%. Those were really tough lean years here in Forest Park. Last year, we realized the first, first full year of collections from the local uh, debt recovery, and that's what we used to subsidize the village hall roof repairs. Um, the newly elected officials may not know what that local debt recovery is, but it's basically a program that the village joined um, through the Secretary of State's office that allows us to put our uncollected debt um, through parking tickets essentially, there's, there's other things involved, but basically parking tickets. We send that to the Secretary of State. If that license plate and the name associated with that license plate is due an income tax refund from the state of Illinois, they get it as soon as they pay off their obligations to the communities involved in that process. Um, last year, the village realized $233,000, and that's exclusive of fees. So. From that program in one year, we got 233,000 free and clear. We understand we can't count on that every year because people are gonna get wise to the fact that maybe I should pay the parking tickets because if I don't, they're gonna collect it some other way from us. But if we're not getting it on this end, then we're gonna get it because the people are actually paying the parking tickets. So, you know, we should keep seeing this revenue either in this line item or in fines, tickets, and things like that. Um, you're welcome. Go ahead, sir. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, John Dahl. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, it's really not a good thing to be a state of Illinois worker because they start, they put a brick on their paychecks if this kind of thing happens. So it's been a, it was a, a very tough program to get started and it required 
a fair amount of work mostly on the police department side and our collection agency side because really weekly we have to send the state an updated version of what we have but for 233,000 free of um, the collection fee guide it's it's real money this is one that you know it's it's free money uh, we recognize thirty six thousand dollars in savings by using our american express corporate uh, rewards for computers equipment training and, and uh, conferences so the biggest number there is the city of chicago allows us to pay our water bill with american express there's no upcharge from the city of chicago for using american express flat out you want to use a credit card to pay we'll take it so we pay our water bill which is a million dollars a month i mean it's huge money with american express we get points for that we turn those points into dollars and anything you can buy basically through amazon which is just about everything you can use american express points and last year we saved thirty six thousand dollars just by using those points um, it, it, it's amazing and of course you guys will remember reading that we're paying extra because you know the city of chicago is charging us extra no they're not um, we used to be able to pay our garbage with american express and in this last contract they said yeah you know what because uh -uh. it costs them two percent so they they won't let us do it anymore but we still have a few people here and there that allow it and we use it wherever we can um, obviously for the points we reduce expenditures in categories of insurance premiums the reference lower contract fuel credit card fees and all departments this is important all departments remain at or under budget uh, with purchases and projects were deferred as necessary for the revenue income so when you look at things like insurance premium refuse all our contract, fuel, credit card fees, those are all things that took action from the village to say, hey, uh, hey, Mr. Insurance guy, we, we can't do that anymore. You're charging us too much. We need help. And this is where uh, Vanessa comes in. Vanessa works hard with our insurance carriers to, uh, to frankly beat them up with pricing. And we do. And if you look at our insurance coverages over the last five years, the total packages have gone down. Uh, now, some of that's due to them wanting to keep clients, but a lot of it has to do with all of the department heads who have made a conscious effort to reduce workers' comp injuries. That's huge. Reduce general uh, liability and casualty claims. That stuff is huge, and that's why these premiums come, come down. The hauler, uh, just I think we're into our second year of our allied waste contract but that process took us probably six months to go through and put that contract out for bid and then finally come up with a successful bidder at a price that was lower than the contract we had been in. Uh, fuel prices went down we didn't have much to do with that but thankfully the fuel prices went down credit card fees that's us calling the banks and going you know what we do enough business with you, you got to reduce your fees. And we, we talked into that successfully. VIP um, fund, an additional half a percent. You all remember, and I'm sure you all voted for the extra half a percent for um, infrastructure needs. That became effective July 1st, 2014. And in that shortened fiscal year, resulted in revenues of 852000 when we passed that referendum, we anticipated a million dollars a year in extra revenue to do capital and projects. That number tells us we were right on with the number. So um, that's why we have things now like an annual infrastructure program, which we just approved at um, our last council. First time ever, five year. Five year. First time ever we put together a five year uh, capital plan. So we're into the second year of that five-year plan. We spent a million dollars last year. You guys voted for and approved about a million dollars in expenses. Not quite yet. You will at the next meeting when you get the alleys. It'll be right up here. A million. We are the recipients of a $2.3 million state grant that was awarded for Roosevelt Road. Uh, Roosevelt Road uh, 
we just created in December, I think we finally finalized it, um, was a new tip on Roosevelt Road. So basically now on Roosevelt Road, from Harlem Avenue to just west of what used to be Motive Parts, but it's it's uh, it was a drywall place for a while. Now it's uh, a storage lot, I guess, for Hawk. Um, both sides of the street, pretty much to the alleys, that's all a TIF area now. Um, and we are hopeful, of course, that well, we know for sure that some of those dollars that are in the existing TIFs are going to be used to supplement that grant from the state so that we can do that massive reconstruction project we talked about on Monday night. Um, and we did complete the comprehensive plan and an economic development plan uh, in 2015. Uh, going forward, you may have noticed we're in the middle of a Madison Street reconstruction project. Uh, that was uh, done with certainly some of our dollars, uh, but it was also uh, made possible through an ICAP grant that uh, we share with River Forest. Um, we're still working, or we are working currently on the engineering study and preliminary work for Roosevelt Road improvements, that's through that state grant and the tip and the mall funds. Um, and just one second on that, probably this summer yet at some point, the elected officials will see first kind of what, what the plan is for Roosevelt in terms of um, you know, what the lighting will look like, what the corners will look like. Of course, it will be changed significantly if the efforts that you guys worked on on Monday night are uh, seen through and we are allowed to limit the size of the street. They'll change to some degree, but because there is some state and federal money involved, um, it's required and we would do it anyway, but once the elected officials have seen it and have input, then we'll have some public meetings so the public can see what the plan is and provide input for that as well. Uh, second year in a row, the village has applied along with Oak Park and River Forest for a tire grant, and that's to completely change and alter the uh, the bridge that's at Harlem and Circle, essentially, the CTA bridge that probably once a month a truck gets stuck under. Um, the, the crash data on that bridge is significant, not serious crashes, fender benders, guys getting forced into, a, you know, the guard or the, the center stanchions or even the side stanchions. So we're hopeful that this year, um, you know, the Fed will see fit to um, help us out with that one. We we're working on, uh, we have state grants for the CTA parking lot improvements and have a pumping station, and then those other infrastructure improvements that we talked about through the VIP and the water pump. Uh, the general fund, here's a couple of big highlights of 2016, capital replacement. So fire engine and an ambulance. They happen if we get a big grant from FEMA. And Steve is uh, always hoping and praying for. Uh, Steve, I forget, was the ambulance 10 years old? Is that correct? It's at least 10, and the engine is 20 years old. It, it's hard to really believe that because a lot of us were here when that engine showed up and they still look brand new. But um, when you start seeing some of the repairs that we have to do on that stuff to keep it running, it makes sense, especially if somebody will help us with the funding to start replacing something. Um, so a, a big one in public health and safety uh, for technology and office improvements. Uh, just a little bit on that. We, two years ago, implemented a software system downstairs in public health and safety that starts reducing everything that we previously done on paper, electronic. And it's the company that designed the software is the same company that does our parking ticket system upstairs. And they've been great at working with us to design exactly what we need. We're taking it to the next step this year. So, um, when this budget is approved, and if these line items are approved, uh, each of the uh, field guys will have a, uh, I think we decided it's going to be uh, a Surface Pro, is that what we call it? A Surface Pro computer. And the stuff they do home inspections with, for example, will be done on a computer, transmitted back, and there'll be an electronic copy of the account. 
it sends reminders, it, it really does everything you need to do. So part of that big number there is to keep moving forward with the uh, technology. In addition to that, for probably since the 50s, whenever somebody built something in town, they give us blueprints. Show us what they built. We have those blueprints. 50 years of them, 70 years of them. And they take up an enormous amount of space. And you think, well, you know, why do we need that? <coughs> you know, why do I need blueprints from something that was built in the 60s? It's amazing how often it comes up that Steve or somebody in his office needs to go in and find a new, an old blueprint and try to back into the history of how the building was built or why it was built or who was building it, where were the lot lines that happens frequently. A big part of this number is to start digitizing and storing all those old records so that if I call up 7428 Washington, I can get the original drawings for the building, the history of the building in terms of zoning through the years, um, tickets that they may have received for you know, building code violations through the years, whatever it might be, those will be searchable now and uh, those files will come up. So it's the next logical step. 75,000 um, is probably, I'm hopeful that it's a high number uh, because we haven't gotten into the actual quote for the work yet. But talking with Tom and Steve, um, Steve staff in that office and these technology guys who would actually sort of make this happen, that's a comfortable number that we can live with if we start working hard at it. Keep in mind, it's not a license to spend the money. If we start getting that guy in and we start getting down into the nuts and bolts of it, and it looks like, and you know what, there's really not a great value to this, um, or it's going to be way more, or it's not going to be real searchable when we do it, we're, we're going to alter it and we'll come back to you. On a purchase like this, you would have to see it before we spent it anyway. So um, it's not a license to spend. And then um, uh, the office down there is not good. <laughs> um, the carpeting, paint, uh, it's, it's in really rough shape. And uh, quite honestly, it's been neglected. And it's time to fix that. So uh, there's some money in that to uh, do some of the painting. Uh, replace the carpeting. There is money in there also to install a single bathroom that's actually in that department. Right now, that staff uses a public restroom here. And um, sometimes that's not the greatest thing in the world, as, as much as we try. Uh, sometimes it's not the greatest thing in the world. Uh, frankly, there are some aspects of it that uh, are relevant to security concern. Um, you know, if, if one of our people in there has had a rough time with a customer, and that's that's not all the way uncommon, because sometimes you're telling folks things they don't want to hear, it's not good if they happen to meet them in the bathroom. So that's something for you folks to talk about, quite honestly, but um, the way it's laid out back there, there's a good spot for it. Uh, there's water and a, a vent and a, a sewer pipe close. It's not a great deal of money to actually make. Yeah, what did you have, like 10 grand, Steve? We, we put in a number of 10,000 to do it. Um, and then you guys may have heard something about a digital sign. Uh, <laughs> um, we've had money in this budget for a couple years now for the digital sign and haven't done it. I'll show you some numbers in a moment that will give you an indication as to why. But that's back in the budget this year. Um, and it's for the corner of Circle and Madison. And uh, it's something for you folks to discuss. The water fund isn't uh, too big this year. We're doing a bunch of water main. Madison Street, 800 block of Lakefront. We got all the sewer that we do as it comes out of the area projects, goes through the water fund. And a, a relatively large number we have is for ventilation upgrades for our pumping stations. And that's due to the IEPA requirements. Okay. This is where our money comes from, out of the general fund. And you can see that 57% of the revenue we get comes from taxes. But 
to look through that line item there are all of those line items, and that's a broad category of how we come up with uh, almost $21 million um, in revenues. It's an increase of 2.8%. Uh, 572,850 is a projected revenue increase. Uh, and the general fund income projection for uh, 2016 is 221. Uh, here's the different taxes that we get. 46% of our uh, revenues are from state taxes. Property taxes are 40%, and 14 is from uh, utility and franchise fee. Overall tax revenues we projected at 3%. And frankly, I think that's reasonable and maybe even on the conservative side. I think when I see a number from 2015 of 13% in sales tax that we're figuring on the low end. And obviously I'll be hopeful to see it continue in that. From the property tax levy, uh, 1.5 increase in 2014 was 1.5 increase over 2013 for the CPI because that's all we can raise property taxes. Um, it's one of those home rule things. As a non-home rule community, we can't raise property taxes any more than either 5% or CPI, whichever is less. So all those years when the CPI, as we all know, um, through the really tough times has been at 1.2%, 1.5%, one time it was less than 1%. That accounted for $76,000 in new revenue. So again, when you hear people tell us that we raised our property taxes, you know, it has been going you know, crazy, I understand that it's a big number. Many people don't understand that when you get the $10,000 tax bill, the village of Forest Park gets about 15% of that. Somewhere between like 12 and 17 there. So $76,000 was the increase in one year. I'll show you in a minute how easily that $76,000 gets eaten up. I really love this slide because it makes it pretty clear. 63.2% of every penny the village gets. Dollar. Huh? Dollar. Yeah, uh, yeah, every dollar uh, goes for wages and benefits. 63.2%. An additional 27% in operations and contractual. We're left with 3.7 for grants and 5, or excuse me, 3.7 for debt and 5.3 for grants. When we talk about operations and contractual, that's garbage paramedic services. That's what I call turning the lights on. Okay? So between wages and turning the lights on, <coughs> providing core services to the village, we spend more than 90% of every dollar. When you each look through each of your departments and then look through all of the other departments, I defy you to find fluff because it's not there. Village does not operate on float because we don't have it. Uh, so, economic incentives. I just want to give you kind of a broad overview of what we do here with the many uh, economic incentives. We have those that are listed Walmart, Fitnet, and we are Hawk, Grand, and Curry Motors. All of them have a couple of things in common. One, we always start with a base. So in other words, I Hawk Chrysler, Hawk Chrysler is up and running, and they say, you know what, we need an economic incentive to build a new part of our building and get a uh, get more revenue coming into both of our, you know, the village and to uh, us. But we need a bigger building to do that. It's going to cost us several million dollars to do it. Can you help us? Well, the first thing we do is say, okay, well, what are we getting from you today? And that's where we start. So. We don't get to start talking about splitting anything that we've already been getting. But if it's new dollars on top of that, then we come up with whatever the incentive is going to be. All of them share two things. They expire either as a result of time, and it's generally 10 years, or they expire as a result of we paid all the money. 
and in varying degrees. So if, if they make an extra $50,000, for example, over whatever the base was set, we split it 50-50 in, in the varying degrees that you'll see there. So um, it's been a very useful tool. It's one that has promoted businesses. Uh, you know, I'll just use them as an example. This Bed Bath & Beyond store, I think the guy just recently told Steve, that's one of their busiest stores, and then Steve, um, and guess what, if we didn't give them an incentive, they're not coming. So we've used that tool very wisely. It's paid off for us. And as you see over the next several years, some of them will expire. Here's the TIF funds, Broad Street TIF. We only pay out, we have on a consistent basis, and that one is to Nunley LLC, that's a retired. And um, we pay 30% of his permanent loan finance interest expense up to 200, uh, 200,000. That expires in 2023. Ultra Foods has a 50% of local shares, local share sales tax revenue generated, a maximum of 1.5 million. It expires in 2024. Those were incentives given to Ultra Foods to have them open here in Fort Park. Um, kind of an interesting one. It doesn't mean a lot, but it's interesting to note that in the general fund. One point or one thousand four hundred and seventy-seven dollars is what we spend per person in Forest Park. Water fund on the line, you can see how that works. Uh, so that's just kind of an interesting slide to see where the money is going and how it's allocated per person. Uh, the debt schedule per the fund, the general fund, um, total debt in the general fund is three point two million. In fiscal 2016, we spent 547,000 and change for our debt service. That compromises 11 vehicles, the LED streetlight project, a series of 11 uh, funding debt certificate that was for the Alton Hand Building and 7418 Randolph. In the waterfront, total debt is 2.9 million. This year we'll spend over just over 435,000, and that's um, all for the um, debt service on the refunding debt certificate. It was water meters. Um, in fact, many, many years ago, had a lot of water main work that we did for that money. Uh, Walmart TIF, 980000 is the total debt left. We'll spend 527000 um, this year. And the remainder next year, the really good news about that TIF, let's wake up, folks. I see some people nodding off here. Um, <laughs> I, uh, this one expires next fiscal year. That's really good news for us. It's, it's served its purpose. Um, and I don't know if Walmart would ever come back and ask for more help. I think I know what my recommendation to the council would be if they did. And I think the council will accept their recommendation. But that's really good news. That's going to expire here next fiscal year. And then the VIP fund. Um, this was for a work that was done in 2005. A lot of water main work, a lot of streets, and a lot of alleys. The remaining debt there is uh, 6.6 .6 million. Our debt service this year is 712,000. And keep in mind that comes from the first half percent of that total 1% sales tax. And if you just look at that number of 712, remember that I said I anticipate a million that will give me the million that I get through the second half a percent, plus almost 300,000 that I can still put towards more uh, infrastructure improvements. One more. Future goals and strategic planning. This will be something that uh, you folks along with the department heads will be taking up sooner than later. But we want to start, especially as the economy starts picking up, as we're starting to see some of our debt go away. We want to start allocating some of those dollars to <coughs> put it in our rainy day capital improvement uh, fund. So we're not having to borrow when we need to buy 10 police cars plus a fire engine. Uh, so that's a real goal. I certainly know it's a goal of uh, the finance director, uh, director and myself. It's been a goal of the mayor for years. Uh, and it, it's obviously a worthwhile goal. And I, I think for the first time uh, since I've been here, 
it's achievable because we're starting slowly through really good fiscal management over the last several years to crawl out of a really deep hole. Um, review of current fee structure, we're waiting on Heinz. Heinz is a contract that's worth almost a half a million dollars to us. Uh, we have we are at the end, uh, frankly been at the end of a five-year contract we had with them for about three years. We've been operating on continuing uh, extensions of that contract up until two months ago when we submitted a new bid. Heinz told us absolutely to tell us by June 1st who got the contract and we're still waiting. Um, and what's this contract? Well, say again? What's the, the meat of potatoes? Fire protection. So fire protection. So our we fire department would respond to We do the suppression there. Um, and it, it's amazing to me, quite honestly, that Heinz can't pull a trigger on, on this and tell us either you got it or you didn't get it. We suspect that another department bid on it. Um, and I suspect, based on uh, some you know, frankly, superfluous information that they probably bid lower than us. But we also know through the chief that they cannot service the contract to the specifications that were written in the proposal. And frankly, what I think is hard is trying to figure out a way to make it work. Um, so that one's up in the air, but. How long have you had Heinz? Or we've had Heinz? Nine years. Nine years? Yeah, we've, we've been there a long time. And it's, it's a great contract for us. Um, so obviously you guys will be in the loop. When I find out, you'll find out uh, what happens there. There's service by the Broadview Fire Department. Broadview, uh, Village of Broadview went through layoffs, and they no longer uh, were able to uh, meet the, uh, the requirements of the federal government with the staffing levels. So um, but when you see the kind of margins we operate on, losing a half a million in revenue is a big number for us. So. Um, you know, when, when you see uh, the antics, I'm going to call them, of what goes on in Springfield, local government distributor fund, we think that for this fiscal year we're okay. So far they've said they're not going to bother us with that. What's that worth, 1.4 million to us annually? 750. I'm sorry, I got to run in the middle of a drink of water. I know, um, 1.5 basically. Yeah. So 1.5 million is what we get from them now. They've talked about cutting it by 50%. Uh, right now, today, that's off the table. But that will be coming up every year. Again, if, and this is what we were struggling with in the early days of this budget process, when they were talking about cutting this, so we lose 750 from the, um, local distributor share in the Heinz contract in one year. It's a million and a half dollars for us. That's real money. Um, pension fund policy for ASB requirements. Um, and that's the how the state of Illinois will start taking it. Is, yeah. Yeah. So here's what could happen in 2016. Uh, and frankly, it's going to take some efforts in Springfield, and I can guarantee you the mayor as well as all of his colleagues will be down there. But let's say that the uh, actuaries who determine what the punch and fund liability is, and I'm making up a number here, just so you know, they say that the village owes the pension funds a million dollars. The village says, you know what, I only got 750000 That's the best I can do this year. The state said, well, that's okay, but we're going to take it out of your sales tax. So before we send you a check, we're going to force you to be whole on your pensions. The state of Illinois has nothing to do with our police and fire pensions. They're going to be able to say, we're going to hold your sales tax until you're brought up to 100%. Their own debt recovery. Yeah, it, it's their own debt recovery. And so, uh, obviously, the Village of Forest Park is actually in pretty good shape with their pensions. There's probably more than half of the surrounding communities that are way worse off than we are. But if that actually happens, that'll be a travesty. Because that's that's not fair. That's not the right way to attack this problem. Uh, so I can guarantee you that the mayor's going to be pretty busy in Springfield. But globally, the issue needs to remain on 
on us as elected officials at least at least at least remain on our radar. Yeah. You know that. So it could happen. Um, in this budget, and, and I know I mentioned it to the three uh, newly elected officials, but I'll say it one more time for the public. We included in this budget uh, salary increases across the board, I guess, at two and a half percent. So we have that number plugged in. So I, I do that, obviously, so that as we start settling contracts, I'm in the ballpark. You know, I know it's going to be a little more, a little less, whatever it is, but I have to put a number in there so I'm sure of where to go. There are no scheduled rate increases in the general or waterfront fees. So let me just throw something out there to you, and I'll, I'll use garbage as an example. In the contract, the garbage hauler and the place where we dump the waste, it's two separate contracts, they say in their contract that they can build in or that they can add to our contract on an annual basis CPI. So again, for the last several years, the garbage contract has gone up 1.5%. Since 2012, the village has not increased the rate to the, to the residents for that garbage service. Um, and we have not raised rates on water except for what the city of Chicago has charged us. We're done with the last set of rate increases from the city of Chicago. We were dealing with a four-year uh, slam, frankly, by the city of Chicago on our water. So far, there's no rate increase projected. But the city of Chicago isn't very forthcoming with that information. It would not be unlikely that <coughs> in these days, the mayor of Bill Leonard in his office says, oh, by the way, for the next four, we're going to raise water 14, 15, 25 percent. That's not uncommon. And there's no negotiating with it. it. It's really a golden rule thing. They've got all the rules. They can make all the rules. So while we don't have anything plugged in um, for either general fund or water, it's possible that, that we'll see something at least on the water side. Yeah. Okay, I'm all in, folks. <coughs> I, I want to call your attention just for one minute before I give you the stage. Under tab one, we have this sheet that says Village of Forest Park Operating Funds um, 2012-2015. And at the very bottom of the sheet, you'll see General Fund and Water Fund Income and Loss. And if you look at um, fiscal year ending 2015, in the general fund, we ended the year with a surplus of $32,000. I'm calling your attention to that just to remind you how close we really operate. $32,000 is a bad snowstorm. I mean, that's, you know, that's extra fuel for equipment that's overtime for police and fire and overtime obviously for John's crews. It's more salt, it's more everything. $32,000 is a margin we operate under. And it's, again, you know, the next year is 54. You know, the next year, uh, we're, we're projecting 22,000. That's why this document becomes so important. Because if I'm starting to look at it after six months and I'm not seeing the revenues, I really better start holding some expenses because I'm only playing with $22,000. So I, I just wanted to kind of bring that home to you, how close we really operate on our budget. And with that, I will sit down and hand it back to the mayor or answer any questions that you may have at this point. Any questions that did so far? On that first page? Yes, sir. Uh, what, 12 to 13, what was the big swing there? The, um, From three million to the loss. That was the, um, so in the game in general fund, yeah. that was the parking fund, I know we talked about that earlier, but we um, merged the parking fund into the general fund. Okay, so it's just movement. So, right, right. Exactly. so um, when I talked about the uh, general fund and the water fund being proprietary funds, the parking fund used to be included in that. But after some research, frankly, we determined that it did not have to stay a proprietary fund and we could merge it. So we did, and that's why it showed the big game that one.
And then the last question on that page, you, you know, four hundred thousand dollars over budget. You know, what we projected to what you actually did, um, which for this fiscal right, year yeah. through yes, two thousand fifteen. Yes, right. You know, just, you know, it is belts and suspenders, I get that. Right. Do you know off the top of your head if you were over or plus budget in 14 and 13? Like you, you made 766 at 1.2, you know, did you forecast, what did you forecast to get? Were we, did we come in or under budget those two fiscal years? In, so in 13 and 14, were you both years, I want to say that we did come under, uh, well, the, well, the general fund did not, you know. So yeah, I'm just talking about, yeah, I'm just talking total, right. total net income. But total net income, I believe we did come within budget, under budget. But our, what was our net, it, was our net bigger than we thought we were going to net, or was, were we? It was bigger than we thought, it was primarily all, it was all water time. It was all water time, yes. The, um, you know, I, it's a hard way for me to phrase this. I was thinking earlier what I could say, but you have to, remember that you know, we've been working on this now for a month or two and we're, we're making educated guesses. I'm making educated guesses about the weather. I'm making educated guesses that the roof isn't going to start leaking on the public works building and that I'm not going to have to spend 100000 there. I'm making educated guesses on how much gas is going to cost in, in eight more months. And I'm making educated guesses that Walmart doesn't have a big problem. So all of this are estimates. And they're based on as much knowledge as, as all of us collectively can put together and come up with something. So and, and the question was just like judging the, your, sure. your adding average per se. Right. You, you right. finished you know above I, I last year. Right. You know, I, you guys keep that trend where you're figure, figure, figuring better than that. Which has been pretty good. Um, you know, I, in the six years that I've been presenting the budget, with the combined funds, we've ended at a surplus. And, uh, you know, I know if you've read the news, certainly over the years, uh, there's a lot of towns who not only didn't end at a surplus, they laid off employees. They stopped providing core services. They changed the way they were providing core services. And thankfully, um, our village has not had to do any of those, uh, and take any of those drastic measures. As a matter of fact, in the hardest of times. We continue to build alleys. We continue to do road work. We continue to do sewer work. Not at the extent that we did, but we've still been plowing forward. So, um, you know, the, the village has a lot to be proud of economically. So, and that's all I have, sir. Any questions thus far? That. And what we'll do, um, we'll start with uh, tab two, the operating funds, and see if there's any questions, comments, or concerns there. Uh, we can move on to tab three, which is the uh, Department of Public Affairs. draft by our deadline we have to file um, October so uh, usually I had a draft um, late September it's a several month process yeah. yeah and anything from last year anything in the letter from last year's audit that was alarming or no the only thing that's been repeated basically is just the um, the adjustments basically that the auditors have to you know, they have to make you know we, mm -hmm. we reduce so many findings but it's basically more the um, you know has to do with the fact that like they're adjusting journal entries um, just because we don't have the staff to really stay on top of all the auditing, gas being, all those reporting requirements. Right. Over, over the years, Dan and uh, other elected officials, uh, we have taken that audit letter, which 
know, I can remember back in the day um, as a commissioner where there'd be 13 or 14 items on it. There's one on there now, and they admit freely that unless we hire two or three more people to work in the clerk's office, we can't do it. So, I uh, just want to make a comment that my time spent with Tishan and Tim was very informative. I didn't know that all the detail that goes into something and you sit down there and you go page by page and uh, tap by tap with this to let us know where the money is going to how to take out the budget with this. And I'm very informative, but obviously when you take it home, you look at it. Have questions, and I just come back to these folks here, and they they got the answer. You know this. Uh, the, uh, I'm not certain if it's the right word to use or not. Exercise that we go through, you know, as elected officials, and I can only draw on the, the history that I have here. Um, you know, over the course of time. Some, some of these meetings have, have been contentious and many others not. Um, you know, sometimes elected officials you know, want to focus in on a particular item or two or three in one or two or three departments for whatever reason and say, I like this or I don't like that. Um, sometimes those have been not on grounded information, but because of some other reason just like chopping something out. Um, it's rare that uh, commissioners want to add to a particular line item because in many cases, just like uh, all of you have experienced, you know, you've had the time to kind of go through it, you know, maybe both with your department head, but then in addition to that globally with Tim and Tish. And as you can see, uh, you know, the staff really does a tremendous amount of work at really trying to highlight to the penny in many cases, here's where the money is going, you know? So really as elected officials, it's all about programming and whether or not, whether or not you feel the programming is proper. Um, outside of that, you know, we, we like to give everybody the opportunity to go through every single department. And just to highlight what Tim said earlier, I mean, with the belt and suspenders, you know, going through this thing, you do see it. Just in the police one here, you know, even with the contracts expiring, you know, you're, you're budgeting $30,000 less in some wage areas than you did based on the actual. So, you know, and, and again, as this is a process, it's a guideline. Those are numbers. Can we really label it in? You know, is that cut realistic and, and live within it? And, and again, definitely respect your guys' opinion and, and see where you guys are making those cuts. You know, so you always present uh, a, a balanced budget. Uh, we try to have just a little bit of surplus, but minimally balanced. And, um, you know, as Tim well pointed out, you know, this is monitored every single month. And in fact, Tish produces a finance uh, report every single month for us because ultimately you know, we're holding the fiduciary responsibility. And it is important to just kind of keep tabs each month how things are lining up. But throughout every year, a lot of assumptions are made. And that's all that you can do is make some good, educated assumptions on you know, where do you see sales taxes? Where do you see property taxes? Where do you see, uh, you know, when the economy starts making its way back up, people are making improvements on their property. And so then we see spikes in uh, permits, you know, for improvements on property, and that means additional revenue. Uh, so, you know, forecasting uh, is a little bit of an art, and, uh, and I think that our staff has done a good job at uh, mastering that art of forecasting. I always think how nice it would be to work in the schools. They have one source of revenue. You know, they get their property taxes. There's no, they don't have to guess at sales tax, they don't have to guess at It's a little more predictable. Yeah, it's a little more predictable. <coughs> and that would be nice to have that. 
and, and you guys didn't re reallocate any like full time funds where I'm seeing regular funds where you decided to, you know, because you're you're showing decreases. You know, I'm already at you know the next page at the community center where your okay. your actuals are a lot less than what you did. Are, are did like, we just reallocate where we're paying this person from, or are we short staff? And we also have some staff retire in fiscal okay. 15, so um, you know, new members coming in that are part of a union contract, they're starting at a little base. Um, fiscal, thir or fiscal 15 also, you know, the, uh, we finance the car, but we still have to show the expense of purchasing a car. So that's the, uh, or the two cars, there's 45,000 less than in fiscal 16. But no, the, I guess the question, no reallocating, no, no, playing the shell game. No. I used to get 100% here, and I'm only 50% there, and 50% there. Right. So we're comparing apples to apples. Yeah, any of the allocations that are listed on some of the sites for salaries, those have been allocated to the like that for for many years. They just haven't been used. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That will move on to the Dolch Court Camp 6. How about Tab 7? <coughs> 8, Public Health and Safety Interests. How about 9, Streets and Public Improvements? I, I just want to thank Tish and, and John and, and Tim. And I sent them probably six pages of notes and questions, and again, they answered them all. all uh, you know, with that, I know you guys have projects, and, and your backup is there. Uh, and again, yeah, I, I just you know want to assure you guys feel confident. You know, your increases are in some ends, uh, and those are new projects that you increased in others. And, and again, respect the fact that you know it came in. I truly respect the fact that any and all, you know, I didn't even have questions that were adding to the question. So uh, thank you for your time. I know that probably was, you know, in the last hour, and I, I truly appreciate it. How about public property? Yeah, Ken? Can we get a new village hall? <laughs> sure. Incidentally, why are you looking at me? Rachel said, sure, on the new <laughs> We obviously can't do that right yeah. now, but you know, I just want to throw out there, you know, that is one of those things that for a long time, uh, I've always felt that we've been a little reluctant to talk about, and uh, pretty soon I'm going to be you know, scheduling some strategic planning meetings, but that is one of those things <coughs> where we need to start thinking out into the future. And we know that we can't do it next year, but at some point in time, our facilities are a little bit aged, and these things are expensive. We need to start planning for them because we won't be able to just all of a sudden one year say, okay, let's build a new village hall, or let's build a new fire station, uh, or let's build a new community center. You know, we, we are absolutely going to have to do some long-term vision. Well, to that point, it makes sense for us to try and put some money in the budget to You know, between public property and, and uh, maybe a charge budget for building maintenance, we or I probably say they were doing that. We probably get the, the space. Right, those things are probably older than you know, myself and Commissioner and Obad combined. Looks like so actually, those accordion doors are probably no more than ten years old. Well, they look pretty. Yeah, if you saw what the older ones look like, you'd maybe want to puke. Well, the DS is a movable stage that I've never seen moved. You know, things of that nature. It's annoying. I, I know Commissioner Novak and Commissioner Epler, they haven't yet gone through the fun presentations where you can't actually see what's being presented due to our lack of technology to actually broadcast and share with like the officials and a lot of other municipalities have multiple screens set up so that they like the officials can see the public can see the cameraman can see. I think between uh, you know public property and uh, well mostly public property, but in a red you know we can start talking about bring a little life to this space. 
And I think the point Tom is making is if you're breaking ground in the if you're doing it in the coding office, you know, make it a little expanded. I see the commissioner of public property was shaking her head <laughs> in an affirmative well manner. I think we need to give her the opportunity to you know talk with all the chat and talk with all the budget. You know, this used to all have dark paneling. Those, those accordion doors were like an orange, inky orange. You know. That's coming back in. They match the orange chairs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, we, I mean, at the time, we did the best that we could with our limited funds, but it's time for a little bit of screws up. How about, uh, I think we're down to tab 11, general fund grant. Waterfront 12? Again, 9 and 12 were the only ones I really spent a lot of time on. Uh, and, and again, thank you for your efforts and all those questions. Uh, again, uh, revenue is up, expenses are, you know, we're playing those playing those games. I look forward to next year actually drafting, you know, or, or sitting down with the staff when they draft the budget. Uh, because again, we're rolling the dice, respect your numbers, we'll see where we come in high, where we come in low, and then definitely analyze you know, where we're off. And every budget, again, it's a, it's a guide, but it, it'll have the backup to tell the story in regards to you know, where we had to pinch pennies and what we didn't get to do, or where we maybe shot over our, our, our expectations. Your Honor, I did, um mention to each of the elected officials as I spoke with them one-on-one uh, -on -one that in years to come, uh, frankly, when it's not an election season and there isn't such a state of flux between getting elected, getting sworn in, we've already pretty much got a document prepared. In the years to come, each elected official will be very involved in the building of their line items, which is impossible to do it in a good like this. I was just kind of going over that with uh, Mr. Vogel from the review uh, before we started tonight. It only happens every four years in an election year. It throws us out of stride just a little bit in terms of the elected officials' early participation in the development of the budget, only because you know our fiscal year ends um, uh, May 30th. And we had elections in April. We had a way to get seated in May. And so it, it throws it off. But next year, we'll be working on this a little bit earlier. Each of you are going to have all the opportunity in the world to become very intimately involved uh, as this starts to come together. And not only for your department, all, all of the departments. And, uh, and of course, I think you'll have a little better familiarity with the whole budget system by then. And, and I think still, it's, it's staff. It's staff's job. They're the ones who get their hands dirty every day. So respect you guys and, and what your needs are, what your asks are. And again, as elected official, just here to assist where we can help. Uh, but again, you guys are the ones who really are drafting your budget. And, and again, the culture of creating ownership. You you, you mentioned that. Uh, but again, it's not a free contract to spend when you know. John gets Section 9 and he has X amount of millions of dollars. It's not just go out and, and spend away. Uh, vision, it's, it's a, uh, you know, it's a taking ownership is key. And, and again, you know, the staff demonstrating this hope over the years, you know, put faith in the budget in regards to you guys are asking and doing what you want to do. As part of our purchasing policy, and I, did we, well, it'll be included in your council when we go through the, the council books, but because we've been in tight spots here for a while, the department heads don't spend a dollar without coming to see Tisha and I first. I mean, every expense is vetted through either Tisha or I. Um, and obviously, most times we say yes, uh, especially if it's in the budget, but we really look at it really every expense that goes for. Um, so. You know, in the past, just as an example, you know, to put it in some type of context, you know, if you had an elected official that might have reduced um, overtime to cut back on so well. Now, I mean, so it's, it seems like that, they have, um, you know, that elected official might have a conversation with the respective department head and say, hey, you 
know, I want, I want to cut this out. Um, I, you know, and, and I'm just using that one as an example. We're just bad numbers. You know, sometimes it's because you want to be able to go out to the public and say, well, guys, okay, save your money. But, you know, thank, thank goodness that we have a, a session like this because things like that need to be properly vetted. You know, it's one thing to go out there and say, you know, I want to save some money, but can we really do that? You know, we want to give up some of the services that we're offering. And, and everything I heard over the last 30 days on the consultation and Tim's office have been, if we're not making it, we're not spending it. So that not only are you looking at the revenue revenue of goals, and again, if they're not meeting it, they know they have to, you know, belt and suspend your income. So I think we're down to tab 13, major funds, VIP, and TIF. Tab 14, non major governmental funds. And last tab, vehicles and debt service. How about anything not mentioned? I, I had two, because I didn't know where to ask it. One was on the revenue side. Are there any projects or additional, you know, with the strategic or master plan, whatever you want to call it, any new revenue engines that are out there that can be explored and or triggers pulled on? Uh, I don't know if it's this fiscal year, if it ends up being, you know, if we didn't budget for it, is there anything that still can be done and be considered gravy? Yeah, any, other, any any revenue engines out there that can be explored or acted upon within the village. Um, Gaming is the one I'm on the top of my head. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are, um, you, know, you could easily, the council could vote to increase fees for various services. Permits were, were probably below uh, what many communities charge for various permits, so you could work hard at that. You know, there's a myriad of those, but because not only the village has been in really hard times, so have all of our residents. So the council, rightfully so, has been reluctant to raise. I told you, we ate three years of increases in garbage. The village did that. And it looked like this year was the year you actually made 30 grand in that. Yeah. But yeah. that's because we got a really good contract. Yeah. Uh, so, if the council wants to talk about raising some of those fees, yes, that, that's a revenue source that could be explored. But we've been reluctant as staff to go there until we get some direction. Some direction video from the gaming, council, that's okay. Video gaming could be a topic, um, and probably at some point we should have uh, <coughs> a discussion, a discussion about it. Yeah. And then the other one was, is anything in the budget, because I just going back to the wonderful debates we all hung out at the middle schools, all that, where Altenheim always tended to be a question. Is there anything in the bus budget with Altenheim specific, or we still have to plan and and we don't have any money to throw at that now? We still have to come up with a comprehensive plan of what we're doing for Altenheim. Yes. So that's it. that's fiscal year 17, and we start shovel breaking and stuff like that if there's funds for that. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Could, could we just go back to Dan's point about the revenue thing? Maybe an interesting, it's a very good point that you brought up, maybe helpful for all of us if staff were to prepare different revenue points. We obviously know that they worked on the sales tax and property tax. They're really kind of limited. We're kind of doing a little bit more comprehensive overview of you know, the 3.7%, I think it was, the, whatever that number was, that um, where our different revenue comes from. I mean, I know we've got vehicle stickers, building permits. There's a, number of different sources that we generate revenue from mm -hmm. that we may take maybe a, perhaps a comprehensive look at everything it would be helpful instead of trying to and, and as a resident too you know I know I don't want to keep shoveling out taxes and stuff like that oh, right. as a resident right so again just exploring what's out there I think there's I, I think you could break two categories what we could do is ask staff to Take a look at you know, all of our <coughs> non, um, property and sales tax related items, which are going to be uh, fees for services uh, or incidental taxes. 
like a vehicle sticker, that sort of thing. Right. Where that you know we can uh, charge them with the task of looking at all of those and what our you know annual income is per item, mm -hmm. and and then say you know if you raise them five, ten, fifteen percent, here's what it equals in dollars and cents. I think what Commissioner Novak is saying, uh, and rightfully so, is are there new opportunities? And the video game would be one that would fall in that category, brand new opportunity that we currently are not receiving. And, I, and we would ask them to think about if there might be some others. I don't know what those might be right off the top of my head, but uh, you know, think about what else might be out there. Well, when Commissioner Ressler and I attended a class of knowledge, uh, they gave us three pages of new revenue sources. What and were some of those items, you know? Well, I, I was going to sit down with uh, Tim and Fish over the next week or so and show them the things that we get from there. That yes. Some of the stuff I never even thought of that, uh, that is a good revenue source. So. Now, uh, did they talk about whether or not they apply to not home rule, home rule? It was both. It does list if it's exclusive it's to home rule right. or if it's something that a non-home rule. Home rule definitely has a little more flexibility um, you know, than, than we do, but that's not to say that there might be some other new revenue sources out there. So you know, I think that would be a good exercise for staff to work through. And maybe we can't get it implemented in, in this current fiscal year, but we could start planning for it maybe in years. Uh, just for the record, I wouldn't mind at all and neither would Tish if there was more revenue than we put in. <laughs> so, uh, it, it's, hard, it's hard operating $20 million with $22,000 of fluff. So, I, I, don't, I don't want to show any of my cards at yeah. the moment, but I'm just going to talk freely. I shared it with some of y'all already. Uh, yesterday I was a little bit bored last night and I was looking at uh, uh, gaming revenue in the city of Burlington for the month of May. During the month of May, $8 million were, was wagered uh, amongst 191 machines in 41 or 42 establishments. $8 million was wagered in there. Um, out of that, they paid out $7 million and then the net ends up getting distributed to the terminal operator, the business owner, and the city. The city made thirty thousand for the for the month of May. And of course, I mean if you carry it out, annualize it, that's a significant chunk of money. I mean, this is real money. It, it's real money, and uh, you know, so we probably are going to need to do a little more analysis on that. Um, and, uh, and at some point, we probably should have. Uh, and it's not to mention in their particular case because they are home rule, they charge a thousand dollars per machine per year for licensing. As I already said, there's 191 machines, so just do the math yourself. That's three zeros. That's that's real money. Mayor, what can we get as a non home rule? Twenty-five. I knew that. I just wanted you to say it for the record. Yeah, that's yeah. $25. Thank you, State yeah. of Illinois. $25 per machine. Um, $7,000. <laughs> yes. But that's not to say that we cannot uh, think outside the box and get a little creative. And let's say we were to go in that direction, then for those establishments that are going to have machines that we couldn't create a separate uh, liquor license classification and increase, increase the fee $5,000 if you want to have that, that particular type of license. So I think that fits right in with where there's a will, there's a way. Sometimes you just got to be a little creative. And I also, I just want to echo uh, what Commissioner Novak said, you know, I, I think it's incumbent upon all of us to you know, lessen the, the tax impact to the local homeowner. You know, let's try and minimize that impact. Let's try and capitalize on things that we can raise new revenue on without touching that uh, property. 
whatever they may be. Put up a toll gate and charge the toll for I'm in, let's do it. I think that's what we're going to charge staff with is just, you know, start uh, getting their heads put together, do a little think tanking, and, uh, you know, maybe come back with a list of recommendations. It's teasing, actually. Well, <laughs> I thought that I didn't want to say it. Other than that, uh, you know, uh, Happy birthday, Mom. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, uh, I certainly want to commend the staff, uh, as always, they do a terrific job, uh, put a lot of hard work into this, but more importantly, and as Tim mentioned several times, and I know this for a fact, uh, throughout the course of the year, this is a fluid project, and uh, throughout the course of the year, each and every month, I mean, they're looking at the revenue side, um, in conjunction with the expense side, but when, when things appear to be not coming in as we had forecasted, uh, our department has truly do an uh, excellent job at adjusting those uh, non-essential uh, items that they can put on until so perhaps either next year or uh, maybe in some cases throughout the course of the year, you know, the revenue income starts to show good signs, so, you know, they're able to go back and pick up where they left off, so they've always done just a superb job. And, and the last thing I have, I promise, is the last thing. You guys think you do the budget stat status on a monthly basis? We do, a, yes. We, we see the bills payable and just still working the way through the meetings. We see the bill, everything you're paying on a monthly status. Does that, that budget status with previous year comparison ever come to the council, or is that more an internal staff? So there'll be a finance report starting in July. There'll be like a finance report okay. uh, included with the council agenda which will basically show the summary of um, the revenues and expenditures. And I'll have the balance sheet for, so the, it'll do, I'll do operating funds, and then I'll do uh, the primary government, so all funds. And then you, for your particular department, will see your line item. Okay. Does that answer the question? Yep. Okay. And, and again, you're showing the budget number in that report? Yeah. And the yeah. actual so number? Yes, yes. So budget, so budget and, actual. and actual. And does it have a comparison of? Prior fiscal year. Prior fiscal year? It does. Right. Okay. Unless there's any other questions, uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. By Nancy, is there a second? Second. Everybody wants to stay. Second. Madam Clerk, you can call roll call. Commissioner Burns? Aye. Commissioner Nader? Aye. Commissioner Novak? Aye. Commissioner Aye. Aye. We stay adjourned. There's still pizza inside here, so if you guys want to.